Live from Town Square Towers at the heart of the Jersey Shore, wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Get up, get out, do something. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin, 708, Thursday, June 30th, 64 degrees, getting up to 83 today. WOBM AM 1160 and 13 News Talk Radio, streaming live on the Radio Pup app at WOBM AM.com, 732 505 1160 to join the conversation. We are now joined. It's no longer theoretical, it's actual. It's actual. Sean Monahan is here with us. Good morning, financial Good morning. guru. Good morning, Jeremy. How you doing today? I am fantastic. So, Sean. <laughs> We were talking about in the break that uh, we kind of glossed over the whole Brexit thing last right. time because we were both like, yeah, it's not happening. Right. Right. It's just, uh, yeah, of the things to talk about that didn't make the top five or ten or whatever it yeah. was that we talked about. And uh, well, we're going to talk about it today, I guess, right? Yeah. So, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so what do you think? How's it going to how, what What's it going to do longer term? Longer term, I don't think we'll even, I mean, longer term, there'll be implications for it. Europe and the UK and, and certain types of industries in the US that do a lot of business with the UK. Uh, short term, there was a, a mental freak out last week in the markets where, uh, for a couple reasons. One is I, everybody got this wrong. This was, this was an issue where everybody assumed that they would stay, remain, if you will. Right. And, uh, and, and it just, I think the world got caught off, uh, off guard. So that, that sort of, mistake in the in the assumptions had a world markets for a couple days there get get absolutely clobbered long term for an american investor i think there's certain sectors certain industries that do business with uh, a lot of business with uk and europe that'll be impacted but as far as the average investor in america i bet in five years you won't even remember it you know i think that uh you know there was a it was a big a big quick move you know i i liken it to um a couple years ago, about a year and a half ago, there was a 10% decline in the market one in October um, over Ebola. Right. Nobody talks about Ebola anymore, <laughs> right? But every day for a month and a half, it was the front of the paper. Everyone th- thought people were going to start traveling. Cruise ships were going to go out of business. Airlines would stop flying different places. And, um, you know, but the markets are the markets are hovering at highs, so they're spooked by these uh, types of announcements, and it, it, people were caught off guard. But at the end of the day... 0.7% of U.S. exports go to the U.K. Right. And 3% of revenues for the S&P uh, are tied to the U.K. Right. So to have a 5.5% decline based on the U.K. is disproportionate. Sure, of course. So. Of course. And, and, we've, so, and we've seen a correction the last two days, and, and I don't know what the futures were right. doing this morning, but, um, but we, we could see the, 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 you know, another day of correction uh, and uh, like you said, it'll all be in the rearview mirror at that point. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, we spent a lot of time last week talking to folks. Keep, you know, stay calm, stay the course, do what right. we're doing. You know, you prepare for these events occur. They're regular events at this point. You know, right. there, there's always some sort of terrorist attack. There's always some sort of political development that will, uh, you know, guide the market one direction or the other. You try not to take too much. Right. On the other hand, on the other hand, if you were a super savvy investor, right, then on Friday, Right, you right. Uh, you uh, you may have uh, gone ahead and uh, and bought a couple things that you've been looking at uh, and uh, and gotten them at a at a at a nice discount. That's right. That's so, right. Yep. So if that, you got some dry uh, you know powder, it's always a good you know when these pullbacks occur to, to do it. But as a long term strategy, it's very difficult to do that. You know, it's very difficult to figure out which day uh, sure. that will occur. And, of course. And, uh, but if there's things on your watch list. And right. industries and sectors, the financials were absolutely clobbered. Um, you know that that was also probably disproportionate. Although they do a lot of business but, with London, but it is a fair, but it is a fair assessment to say that if you're a disciplined investor, right, and you have developed a watch list of a couple of companies that you feel really good about, or some things that you, and I'm sure you as a, a financial, uh, you know, financial advisor, financial planner, this is what you're doing. You're looking at a couple of things that you feel really good about, and you know when you have a uh, you know, a, a quick snapshot in time like this, you may have crossed those barriers, hit those hit those uh, low water marks that you're looking for, and it may have been the opportunity to really kind of snatch something up, right? 
Uh, that's right. That's right. The problem with that is it also went down on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, listen, you never. So you'd still you, be about flat right if, now. If you're but, always going to wait for the bottom, 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 no, you're it's never going to find I, it. Right? I, I don't advocate doing that. <laughs> I think it's a very difficult uh, thing for people to do. And, and right. frankly, a lot of studies show that, that that over any period of time, it's very difficult to do that. You can pick a, a right day like Friday uh, in certain industries or Monday in certain right. industries and, and, and be right. But that, that can also, that sort of logic can come right. back at you. So, so, so. Talk to me, though, I guess, more kind of uh, longer term, uh, at least for, let's say, I don't know, a four-year period. Okay. Right? Uh, we could say that uh, that possibly one candidate or another may have a longer-term impact on on stocks and, uh, and other investment opportunities. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that as we, as we kind of really kind of uh, dig in for election season? Right. Well, what we talked about... Um you know, briefly last time I was here is that these elections are coming up. I get this question five days a week. You know, what is, what's the election going to mean for our, our portfolio? What if this happens? What if that happens? And there's a lot of different theories about which political party is better, whether a split Congress or, uh, you know, a unified Congress with the executive branch is better. And, you know, there's an, just endless theories out there, uh, on whether the first years in a cycle are better than the later years in a cycle. Uh, which, you know, what, 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 this was one that I found I hadn't really, political party convention theory that's, you know, that those are good times to invest. A lot of these things have been debunked, though. A lot of these, these theories of what will happen are, it's very, it has less to do with the president, more to do with the bigger picture in the economy. And there's a lot of statistics that basically show that the president doesn't have as much to do with it as people would think, other than people are emotionally attached to the elections. Anxiety drives the market volatility. Uh, if it's an uncertain turnout or uncertain, um, you know, if the elections, if, if we if we continue to have close uh, polling up until the election, that does not do well for the market as far as it creates a lot of volatility. Sure. So you have right now you have a couple candidates and um, – you know, it's it's very diff- it's, it's, impo- it's frankly it's impossible, and all the studies show that it doesn't really, um, it doesn't matter as much as people would like to think which party's in the White House statistically over time. Right. So 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 it doesn't matter so much. Well, I mean, it does matter, but it doesn't matter uh, from a White House standpoint. But but it does it matter more from a White House and a Congress. I mean, you know, the last time I guess we had a. Um, a, uh, I mean, when was the last time, for example, that we had a White House and a Congress that were um, unified from a from a party standpoint? Well, the 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 one the one set of statistics I was looking at says by far the the best actually since uh, 1900 for the market was having a unified Republican. It was either since 44 or since 1900 was having a unified Republican House, Senate, and Congress, right? And that the, the market did the best in those terms. But it's it's only happened for like six years. Right. You know, so it's a small sample size and significantly. Uh, um, but it was during George W. Bush. Right. And George W. Bush is one of only two presidents that actually has a negative stock return during his tenure. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Him and um, actually um, Nixon. <laughs> Him and Nixon. Oh my goodness! Uh, but he was, you know, uh, Bush. Though he had the, so he had he had a unified Congress, which arguably led us, you know, to some. I mean that that was the precursor. He lost Congress, and then the, 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 that's when the market actually got clobbered. But he got whipped at the beginning with the uh, technology bubble coming to an end at nine eleven, right? And then at the end with the the, the financial crisis. So, right. But he was one of only two presidents. Other than that, everything negative. went. Other than that, everything went perfectly to script. Out of curiosity, you know who has the best return for uh, president? Let how li- listen. Best annualized listen, return. Don't answer that because we're up against a break. Let's talk about who has the best annualized return as a president when we get back. I don't Sean, think you'll. I don't think you'll get it. Uh, listen, maybe I will. Sean Monahan, our financial guru. Back after this. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin wherever you go. Download the Radio Pup app for your smartphone or tablet. News Talk Radio WOBM AM eleven sixty and thirteen ten. 
connect with Jeremy, 732-505-1160. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160, 1310, and WOBM AM.com. Hey, wake up with Jeremy Grunin, back with our financial guru, Sean Monahan. And so uh, we talked about who had the uh, who had the worst returns as president, uh, which, okay, listen, a lot of that, a lot of this is circumstances, right? I mean, you know. Well, that's the overriding point, yeah, is that it is circumstances right. and that, that it has less to do with the man in office or right. woman in office, uh, potentially, than, than actually. So my guess for what the best returns was uh, was Bill Clinton. Right. Close. Yeah. Where, where did he, how, how, how far up there was he? He's second. Okay, good. So I got second. That's yeah. not bad. That's not bad. So The okay. first one's tough. Who's that? You gonna guess or no? Besides, I did. I, besides, I guess Bill Clinton. All right, so uh, I'll give you a hint. It's a Republican. It's a Republican. Uh, well, it's gonna have to be uh, Ronald Reagan, Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford, really a, a right, stellar Daniel president. Eighteen percent a year. Yeah, a stellar president. Right. right. I mean, generally but regarded. It, yeah. The point is, very anxious country when he took over. Right. Right. He he. he the Nixon was one of the only two that sure. had a negative return. The guy resigned from office. You know, huge black mark in our history, and any stability. People were yearning for stability, and in that in that period of time, uh, we didn't have a lot. To right. be honest with you. So I think that uh, having an adult in the room, and he was also not even the vice president. I mean, he was the vice president yeah. then, but Spiro Agnew had already resigned, and he was he was the senator. So that's know? interesting. So if you take over after a um, a wild ride of a presidency. Right, you and, and you're the the quote adult in the room. Right. You have the opportunity to really make a positive impact. I, so I guess it's a little bit unfortunate for us that we don't have an adult in the room that's running. We're in this facing a volatile event. time here, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> we got uh, we, we got a situation that might be uh, treacherous, but the reality is the, the you know there was a lot of fear when you know when 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 Obama when when the President Obama took over, the market dropped five percent that day. Right. You know, and uh, so and and but. You know, the ship got righted. It was so, eight thousand. Now it's eighteen thousand. So, what are the long term issues that um, that we should be dis- like? Like, what are the things that these candidates should be discussing that would actually have an impact? Well, I think the one th- to me, right? Uh, I, I, so, first of all, when I I work with clients and and I work with people all day every day, and I can I work to figure out what we control, right? Our exposure to different assets, our exposure to asset classes, different types of investments. And so forth, and and I don't control the elections, uh, but what I what I'm concerned about. You look at all these different numbers, and the you know which does better, Democrats, Republicans, tr- you know, trade policies, tax policies. There's not a lot of issue. There's not a lot of agreement that there'll be any. And and there's been no recent signs that anything big would be accomplished, right? Right. Entitlement reform is one thing that I look at. That it's a ticking time bomb in the state of New Jersey, and on a federal level that uh, I think is unsustainable. And at, at some point, we have to look at it. And we have to look at our tax policy, corporate and individual in this country. And you know, right now, Social Security, except for like a blip in the last year when Christie was getting 4% of New Hampshire's you know, voters, it, it's nobody's talking about it. Nobody wants to address these things. You know, it's very... Uh, um, it's 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 a personality. It's a reality show. Unfortunately, we have right now. Right. But what I think the investors can expect is that days like Friday and Monday will continue for the rest of the year. I do expect volatility to continue. I do expect there to be uh, sort of anxiety, uh, whoever it is, because we have two very very unpopular people that are running, and I mean, it's a divided country. So all the more reason, all the more reason um, that the. Uh, let's. I don't want to say the uneducated consumer, but I'm. Uh, but I'll say that the, uh, the somebody that has less experience um, with uh, with with the financial markets really needs an expert to kind of help guide them through these treacherous waters, right? Yeah, and I think I think when you come up with a plan, you have to come up with a plan for good scenarios, bad scenarios, bull markets, bear markets, presidential elections. Frankly. Uh, I don't think these terrorist attacks are going away anytime soon. No, I think that, that that sort of international sort of anxiety will continue. I don't I don't see any end to it. I don't see, you know, and I don't think it, my own opinion, I don't think it necessarily matters who wins. And, in, in, you know, right, absolutely. I think these, these nuts are going to go off in airports and malls and stuff like that. And I think they'll take hostages and be crazy. And, F- Financial guru Sean Monahan, where can people reach you? Where can people find you? You can reach me uh, at my office, 609-693-3800. You can always email me, S-E-A-N at F-I-N-A-L-T. That's short for Financial Alternatives, 
dot com. So it's F Sean at F I N A L T dot com. Or you can call my office, 609-693-3800. Awesome. Thanks for Sean having me, Sean Monahan, our financial guru. I, I'll tell you what, Sean, you always put my mind at ease. I'm always ready <laughs> to jump off the top of here of the Town Square Media Towers, and, and then you talk me off the ledge. So thank you so much, sir. Thanks. Thanks More for having me, Wake Jerry. Up with Jeremy Grunin after uh, Hometown View. Back after this. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310.